All right, we have <clears throat> looked at the issue of power coming out of this cylinder wall channel to the cylinder wall transceiver. And <clears throat> what we want to do is go through the process of what might happen if we were able to measure power levels. Now, it turns out that part of the equipment for creating these uh, transceivers is that they do actually have the ability to measure power levels. So, <clears throat> measuring a power level with these transceivers is, is nothing that is new or different or hasn't been thought of or isn't understood. <clears throat> And we're going to set the transceiver to have uh, part of how they're normally put together is the transceiver sends out radio wave energy at a certain power level until it uh, is in communication with another transceiver and the other transceiver sends back a signal and the two of them negotiate a power output level that is sufficient power for them to communicate well but that minimizes the amount of power they're putting out um, so that they're not transmitting their signals out into where there's no need for those signals. But we're going to uh, take that circuitry that controls power output of the transceiver and just say, do your constant power output all the time at a, some uh, level that we think is protective to the transceiver, like... 85% of full power and we're going to say in the situation and we'll go back over here to number E and we'll have E turn off its quantum effects power level and let E be on at full power and the way that E gets to be on at full power is if the um, piston is moved in a manner where the channel of energy coming from the piston is directly lined up 100% with the um, transceiver E channel so that if we looked inside there it's 100% aligned right dead on and we can once again just we're not going to do this over and over again but Actually, this is what's going on. That power is coming out. Okay, so um, if we go back and uh, look at a, a measurement of the aperture opening is completely and fully open, 100%. And we're going to make an arbitrary power statement that whatever is the power that we're getting when the aperture is fully open, we're going to call that uh, a power level of 10 so we're at a hundred percent of opening and we have a power level of 10 so we're going to put that little dot right there that's a data point so 100 percent open received power of 10 so the power being put out by transceiver piston one transceiver is not what we're looking at what we're looking at is the power received by cylinder wall transceiver and we can now uh, uh, enter into a discussion <coughs> of some of the issues associated with measurement, which is that let's just turn it all off, go downstairs, read the paper, come back, turn it all back on again. We didn't do anything. We didn't move anything. We just turned off the transceivers and turned it back on again. And here's the question. What uh, would happen? And you might say, well, this new measurement would be right there, right exactly where that one is. But the truth is, that's probably not what's going to happen. So instead of 10.0, we might get 9.8. And if we uh, then took our micrometer system and moved the piston to zero and then brought it back again to what we consider to be absolutely 100% fully open, and said, okay, now what happened? We, we went down there and measured it again, 
the value that we're going to get, it could be exactly 10 as a possibility, but it might not be. It might be 10.1. And if we just have some variability of how many times we turn it on, turn it off, move it around, go downstairs, check the internet, do this, do that, do whatever, and I'm going to move these out to the side a little bit just to let you see that there's a stack of them there. And we measure this over and over and over and over and over again, and we begin to get a collection of data points telling us uh, what result we got when we tried to put this thing to its absolutely exact identical same condition over and over and over again. And what we're looking at is just the issues that are associated with measurement, because when you work with actually real equipment, um, you don't get variability of, uh, 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 of zero. The variability that you get with actually real equipment is that you just get some variability. Okay, so you can see here that we've measured the value over and over and over again, and we've got a little collection of dots here around the point of uh, our, our arbitrary value of 10. So what are, we're calling this set of numbers to be equal to 10. It's got a little bit of some variability to it, and our opinion of the opening is that it is fully open.